In this video, we'll be looking at patterns of inheritance, uh, and we'll be looking at specifically different types of monohybrid inheritance, uh, so different types of crosses in there. So there'll be uh, five types of crosses uh, for monogenic inheritance that I'm going to uh, talk about here. So here's the first one. So the first type is homozygous crosses. So as you would know, uh, we have three different types of words to describe um, the phenotype, certainly genotypes of different individuals. So we have homozygous, which means the same. So we can have homozygous dominant, uh, which means an individual with both of the dominant alleles, or homozygous recessive, meaning they uh, have both of the recessive alleles. So in this case, let's uh, use the letter B to represent the, this allele. So if it's a homozygous cross, that means that you have a homozygous dominant uh, individual crossing with a homozygous recessive individual. If this individual is to make gametes, then uh, it can make all of the gametes like that. So we use the circle to represent that it is a gamete, not just the entire individual. Whereas this person here would make gametes that contain the, heter um, the recessive allele there. So that's what we can represent. Now, uh, this, this is what we call a Punnett square. So it's literally, uh, the Punnett square is used to show the all of the possible crosses, the, all of the possible genotype offsprings, and from that to deduce the um, head, uh, phenotype uh, as well for the offsprings. So here, you've got dominant and recessive uh, pretty much for all of them. So the result, it would be this. From this cross, you will see that uh, the only possible type of offspring that we will get would be heterozygous. So uh, we also can represent in terms of the percentage or proportion of different types of genotype in the end. So in this case, it's 100% heterozygous. It is worth actually remembering uh, the percentage for different types of crosses, especially for homozygous and heterozygous crosses, because there was an exam question last year where uh, you had to, uh, they tell you in the question that all of the offspring for this particular organism are all heterozygous. And from that you have to deduce um, and you have to know that if the offsprings are 100% heterozygous, that means that it must be a homozygous cross, meaning that um, a parent, one of the parents must be homozygous dominant and the other one must be homozygous recessive. So make sure you learn the percentage there. And you can see here we've got F0, which means the original um, sort of generation. And then we've got the results of that would be F1, which is the other generation uh, after that. Now, on the other hand, we can have another type, which is called the heterozygous cross. And what that would be, um, as the name implies, is when you have two heterozygous individuals crossing together, so like this. And if that's the case, uh, you can see now that each of these individuals can now make gametes that can, may contain different uh, types of alleles. So rather than in the homozygous cross where they can only make one, uh, uh, they can only make gametes that only contain that one type of allele, they can make two different things. So it would, we can present it like so. Now, because of that, obviously, the, uh, the offspring would be a bit different from the homozygous cross, and the offspring's combinations of alleles would be this. So now you can see that the combinations would be different from the homozygous crosses. Now, here we've got one of, out of the four here that would be homozygous dominant, one of the four that would be homozygous recessive, then two out of the four would be heterozygous. So the way we describe it would be like this. We can say that in terms of the genotypes, then uh, we will get this sort of combination. 25% of them will be homozygous dominant, 50% would be heterozygous because it's two in four, and 25% would be homozygous recessive. Now, if the question is asking about the phenotype ratio, then obviously in combination of that, 75% of them would show the dominant trait, whereas the other 25% would show the recessive trait. So when answering the questions, just be very careful and see if they're asking for genotype or the phenotype. And that will be the heterozygous cross. So codominance means that we're in the situation that both of the alleles of one gene are dominant. So rather than having a capital letter to represent the dominant allele and a, a small letter for the recessive one, you would have both of these alleles represent represented with a big letter or capital letter. Um, but perhaps they would show slightly different traits. So because of that, you can, sh you can have three possible phenotypes and one of them would be a mixed one. 
So uh, the classic example here would be the colors of uh, a flower. So here in this case, uh, we've got, you can see here that it's not the same as the one before, where we literally just have big B, small b to represent the alleles. But here we would have uh, a different letter, like here it's C, which is the color of the petals of a, of a flower. And then you can have the allele as a superscript uh, on the right hand corner there. So here you can see that you've got, they've this particular combination, both of which contain the uh, red allele, then obviously it will become red. However, if it is, uh, it's got both of the white allele, then of course it will become white. However, in the in the case where we mix the both of them together, because they're both dominant, so none of the allele is going to overshine or outshine the other one in some sense. So you will have a mix of these two. So red and white mixed together, you will get a pink um, color petal of the flower. Notice how we use the uh, the, uh, the gene symbol here with the superscript as the um, allele rather than having the letters here because if we do the letters like so we will actually be representing epistasis when we're saying that these two are actually two different genes um, and that is not the case so be very careful because this that came up in one of the past exam questions and people a lot of people lose marks because they wrote this instead of that so make sure you're be you're very careful with that so here, let's do an example, right? So let's say the first generation cross is when we have a red flower crossing over with a white flower. And if we use a Punnett square to predict the outcomes of this, it will be as follows. It's very similar to uh, what you would expect to see in a homozygous cross, except this time they're both dominant, is that you will have a complete mix of them. Um, obviously, again, making sure that if you're showing a gamete, you must make sure to put a circle or a ring around the uh, particular allele to make sure it's very, very clear. So here you would see that all of the um, offsprings here would be what we say co-dominant, uh, showing the heterozygous combination. So it's 100% pink flowers here. Now let's say if we took as two out of all of the offsprings that they have and cross them together, so this time we will almost have what we call a heterozygous cross, then it will be like this. Now just looking at this, based on what we know about a heterozygous cross, uh, we would expect that the ratio to be uh, 1 to 2 to 1, where you get 25% of them being um, homozygous dominant, or in this case, both of the alleles are red, and then 25% where both alleles are white, and then 50% of them would be heterozygous where they have a mix. And actually you can see from this Punnett square that that will be what we get. So again, from this Punnett square, you can see that 25% would be red, 25% would be white, 50% would be pink. And this is codominance, where both of the alleles are dominant and they would show a mix of the phenotypes. Now this is the fourth type of monohybrid inheritance where in a situation that there is one gene but there are more than two alleles. So it's not just uh, one dominant and one recessive but you might have more than just these two types. And a classic example here would be about blood type. As you would know, there will be uh, different types of blood, so like type A, type B, type O, or even type AB in the simplest uh, terms. And the reason why we get these different types of blood uh, would be because of the, um, the antigen that is presented on the surface of our red blood cells. Which type of antigen that we will get is determined by the alleles that we have in our genome. So, for example, uh, this is how we represent the blood types. So you can have I, which is the gene symbol. So I actually standing for immunoglobulin, as you would know, is another term for the proteins that is usually found on the surface of, of a cell. And we can have IA, a, again, in, as a superscript. So what that means is actually A for antigen A, B for antigen B, and O is representing that there are no antigen on the surface of the red blood cells. So that's why we say people with type O blood are universal donors because no one will be rejecting or none, no one's immune system will be able to detect that particular red blood cell since there isn't any antigen on the surface. And it's worth noting uh, that there is a difference between them. So, uh, and we say that actually um, A and B alleles are both co-dominant, so meaning that they're both dominant alleles, uh, whereas O is recessive to both A and B.
here are the different possible combinations and we can we'll have a look at, at them here. So on this side we will sh uh, you can see the genotype, the different possible crosses or the result of the crosses and on this side we will talk about the phenotype. In terms of the crossing, uh, like Punnett squares, it works exactly the same way as uh, all of the squares that we worked at before. So again making sure you have the circle to represent the uh, different gametes but the crosses are exactly the same. But it's more about how do you interpret the genotype that is the, that is the key thing there. So for example, I can have IAIA or IA and IO. Remember that IO, which is O type, is recessive to both A and B. So therefore IA and IO means that it will, even though it's heterozygous here, it would show the trait of A. So in both of these cases, you will get type A blood. And same for this part. So this person either can have IBIB or IBIO. Again, O is uh, recessive to B, so therefore uh, both of these combinations will lead to type B blood. Now on this one, however, because it's got both uh, IA and IB, but because they're both dominant alleles, so this is actually exhibiting co-dominance, uh, which is the same as what we talked about before. So you will have a mix of the two of them. So that's why you will get type AB. And what that means is that this person's body will, uh, the replica cells would contain both uh, both antigens A and antigen B on the surface of the cell. Whereas this person, if uh, if this person's genotype is IOIO, -O, so their homozygous is recessive in some sense, then they will have type O blood, where they would have no antigens whatsoever on the surface of their red blood cells. And that will be a situation where you get multiple alleles. Now the fifth type of monohybrid inheritance that we'll look at will be about sex linkage. So uh, linkage is a term to describe uh, when the genes are when there are two genes that are found uh, on the same chromosome. But we can have different types of linkage basically. So in this case, sex linkage means the genes are found on the sex chromosomes. Now as you would know that there are two types of sex chromosomes, so chromosome X or chromosome Y. Chromosome Y is comparatively a lot smaller than chromosome X, so that's why they actually carry a lot less genes compared to X. So we're saying in some of the conditions uh, that are determined by genes that are found on the sex chromosome, it's mainly due to the allele that is carried on chromosome X. So you can say, for example, on the X chromosome, you will, it will have a gene or an allele on top of it, but because of the size of, uh, of the Y chromosome, it wouldn't have the same gene. So if it's a male, that means the combination would be XY, then they are more likely to be affected. Because in this case, um, for example, if you carry a particular uh, recessive allele that can cause a particular condition, there isn't a, another allele, a dominant allele on the Y chromosome to actually counteract that. Um, so that's why it's more likely to be affected. Whereas females have XX, so they're less likely to be affected because that it, there is a, a much higher chance than the males to have a different allele on the other X chromosome to, uh, to basically uh, shadow the effects. So if we look at this particular example here, it makes more sense. So let's say on this particular case, uh, we, you don't need to worry about exactly what gene we're looking at, um, but some of the common examples would be uh, other um, color blindness or hemophilia. So let's just say this particular condition, like say color blindness, uh, it's uh, due to the recessive allele here. So we can either have, uh, and we, like we said before, it wouldn't be found on the Y chromosome because the color blindness gene is linked to the X chromosome there, uh, mainly because of its size. So let's say we can have X B or uh, X big B or X small B. So for males, if the male has inherited X big B and then Y, that what that would mean that it will receive the dominant trait which is the, the normal uh, eyesight condition sort of thing. However, if another male has received the recessive allele, so X small b, and then Y, because there isn't one that actually counteracts it, so it will experience the recessive trait. And if that's the case, what you're actually looking at, for males, there is about 50% probability, 50% chance for this male to become uh, colorblind. Whereas for females, you can have uh, three possible combinations. You can either have big B, big B, big B, small B, or small B, small B. Now, for both of these cases, uh, big B, big B, or big B, small B, they will experience the dominant trait. Again, it's normal eyesight. However, if, if this person is unlucky and they've got the recessive allele, then obviously they will get the recessive trait. However, as you can see, compared to the male, rather than having a 50% chance to be recessive, you actually have about 
a 33% chance to be affected, so much lower than the 50% in males. And we can technically say that this particular individual here, because of the heterozygous nature, uh, can also act as a carrier um, in here because it's got the recessive allele, but is not affected here at all. So that's why we say that uh, in, for a lot of the sex-linked or sex-linked genes, the males have a much higher chance to be affected. And also one of the reasons why uh, the uh, red-green color blindness or color blindness in general are much more prominent in males. And this is sex linkage. So very quickly as an overview. So here we're just looking at monogenic inheritance where we're talking about patterns of inheritance for a single gene. Um, so for example, we can have homozygous cross where we have homozygous dominant crossing with homozygous recessive. Then you will get 100% heterozygous as your offspring outcome. Uh, on the other hand, if it's a heterozygous cross where you're crossing two heterozygous individuals together, then you get this following ratio you, where you would be expecting to see around 25% around homozygous uh, dominant, 50% chance of heterozygous, and 25% chance of homozygous recessive. So a total of 75% dominant trait or 25% recessive trait. Keep in mind that this is only the expected ratio, but it could be different in real life, which we'll talk about in a future video. A third type would be codominance, where we're saying that for one single gene, both of the alleles for that gene are dominant. So that would mean that you would show three possible phenotypes and one of them would be the mixed one if they've got the heterozygous combination. So a classic example would be about colors of the petals of a flower. So you can either have CRCR, which is for red, CW, CW for white. And if it's a combination of CR and CW, then you will get it pink rather than just red or white because it's a mix of both of them. Make sure you know that you are writing the uh, genotypes like so rather than just saying R and W because that would represent saying that the two different letters would represent two different genes. And on that case, you're saying that they are doing epistasis, which is the interaction of genes. But that is not the case here. It's the same gene, gene C, but different alleles. Sometimes it's possible to have a single gene that can have more than two different types of alleles rather than just dominant and recessive. So a classic one would be about blood type where you can have IA for blood type A, IB for blood type B, and IO for blood type O. So uh, keep in mind that both IA and IB are dominant over IO. So actually in some sense they exhibit codominance. So here are the different combinations which you will see uh, re re result in different phenotypes. And finally, we will have sex linkage, which is about genes that are found on the sex chromosomes. So you, uh, males have XY, so uh, and females have XX, and that's why we say, because of the lack of allele on the Y chromosome, that males are more likely to be affected, whereas females, because there is a, still a second chance that the second X chromosome contain an allele that can um, outshine the first one, uh, and that's why they're less likely to be affected. And these are different types of uh, monogenic inheritance.